Hello and welcome back from Top of the Wall. My name is Mason Op. Welcome to Commander Power Hour. Uh, this week I've decided I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, I had already started working on another commander deck for the first time in a little while. Just a regular commander deck. Uh, this one is a budget commander deck. I decided to start making a budget mana base for this commander because somebody was uh, looking to play the best lands possible for their deck. Um, and... I had like seen their comment, their little post online, so I decided, oh, I'll just, I'll just make uh, a mana base for one, uh, for them, and so I did. I gave them uh, the resources for it, and I like, you know, this commander does seem pretty cool. I should, maybe I should, you know, build a deck around this one. So I'm gonna build a deck around this commander for under a hundred dollars. Now, Sir Gwen, hero of Ashfold. Um, she is an amazing commander. Six mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Vigilance mana. She passes the vanilla test. Plus, she has this sweet little ability down here. Equipments you control have equipped knight for zero. And whenever uh, you attack with her or one of your equipped creatures, you draw a card and lose one life. She is a definitely... Uh, she definitely can fit into a Voltron uh, deck. She is a good Voltron creature. Which is where you stack a bunch of artifacts and equipment or auras onto a commander and start like beating in to try to get lethal. Plus she has Vigilance and Menace, so she has the evasion. She has the ability to block for you, which is part of one of the downsides of having so few creatures and going into Voltron. She also gives you the card draw, so she can give you a little bit of card advantage here and there. She's already like every almost everything that you need. You just need any equipment to go with her. So what I'm thinking that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to try to probably ramp into her, uh, all the while playing out a few equipment here and there, and just really trying to get hexproof onto her, because a creature like this, it's eventually going to kill your opponents, and it's going to start to like demand things like board wipes or counter spells. Can you start a timer for 45 minutes? I'm starting the timer for 45 minutes. Okay, uh, that's 45 minutes on the clock. Um, I'm giving myself a little bit less time because I already have a mana base going of uh, some cards. That'll work. I'm going to uh, just go ahead and start off with uh, the good old Soul Ring. Because Soul Ring. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a bunch of equipment here. You know, thinking about it, we probably don't need that much ramp. We only need a uh, temporary ramp. Fire Shrieker is a nice cheapy to go with our commander. And instantly makes it a, a three hit kill. Any other equipment with it just makes it a... A potential one or two hit kill. Crano plating is a great payoff for having some artifacts. Ooh, Godsend might be pretty sweet. Oh, Ten dollars for the Godsend. Jesus. Uh, good thing that golem skin gauntlets are still pretty good now we could go with infect which does actually escalate things quite a bit uh in the game and people will uh look at you like hey you're now the threat but i think uh the exoskeleton might be worth it Oh, we'll take Hero's Blade. It's, um, the commander kind of feels a lot like playing out of Zergo, and this thing was a, a great card in, uh, in my Zergo deck. Uh, I will enjoy these Jousting Lances, the Jousting Lance, and the Inquisitor's Flail. It's a pseudo kind of, um, double strike, while at the same time our commander takes double damage. Six dollars for, uh, Lightning Greaves? Jeez, commander has gotten a little, a little pricey. Oh, Ogre's Cleaver seems perfect for this deck. Look at this. Plus five power for an equip cost of zero. Oh man, what a great two mana cost uh, equipment card. Quick note on the Rogue's Gloves. Um, super strong budget card. Uh, just gives your, gives your creature like the ability to draw cards.
Uh, the Slayer's Plate also just seems like good meat for the deck. Uh, another good cheap equipment. And, uh, you know, I'll go for a Mother of Runes, um, so I have more creatures. Um, it doesn't seem like a bad idea to take a Mother of Runes. She's very cheap. She's a very, she's a nice lady. <laughs> Your mom's a nice lady. Uh, let's see here. We got, <laughs> got plenty of cards already. Ooh, we might have too many. And let's see, what does our budget look like? Estimated money, uh, almost $100. Already nearly at our budget. Disenchant, because Disenchant is actually pretty good. Uh, we'll take Return to Dust. It's a good two for one um, to deal with. Our opponent's difficult to deal with uh, cards like enchantments and artifacts. Ooh, Vandal Blast is super good, but <laughs> problem. It is five dollars. I will take it. It is it is worth the five dollars. We'll clean this up. We'll go get our mana base out real quick. clean up here and we have a bunch of cards now I'm gonna get a, a few more pieces of ramp for the deck uh, I'm thinking of just some simple ones the Tome of Lend Legends does seem like a good card draw engine for our commander and does fit into our uh, mana base that is primarily trying to cast uh, colorless spells uh, the Skyfire Phoenix seems good and is within our budget. Um, I would like more creatures, and that just seems like a good recurrable creature. Netherborn Altar. Uh, if our commander gets removed a few times, this could actually be pretty great for us. It uh, cheats on our on our uh, the command tax at the cost of losing three life. Geode uh, Golem seems nice too. Uh, it does cheat on our commander's converted mana cost it's colorless it fits within the mana base it has that nice bit of evasion with from the trample plus we can equip our equipment to it and then we can uh put our commander onto the battlefield re-equip all the equipment onto the commander that seems yeah that seems good we'll go here see what we got all right we're up quite a few more cards um <laughs> i need to make sure that we don't accidentally have two of any one thing uh like scythe claw over here um i think i'm gonna remove helm of the host because it is very expensive not just uh in paper money but also in uh converted mana cost so i've just realized something uh a little tiny issue with scryfall here um if you specify the pr the printing uh on these cards you can actually make the cards cheaper uh, but that really does affect the budget because sometimes the printings can be uh, the difference like changed by a few dollars at a time now I think I'm gonna return to finding a few more staples. Uh, I really do want ramp I think I'm just gonna have to turn towards uh, the mana rocks and the signets for that Now I did say I was looking for ramp and our Miller sphere is not technically ramp, but when you start a game off with two lands in hand and an armillary sphere, you know that you're gonna make your land drops for a good portion of the game, which is better than a lot of the uh, ramp decks can actually muster. A lot of them, when they're actually ramping up, they're failing to actually make r land drops consistently. So at that point, you just making your land drops can actually keep up with them.
right, I grabbed a ton of stuff. I am now officially definitely over budget. Definitely, uh, <laughs> I definitely have a few, uh, few cards in here. Probably need to cut down on a few of them. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the budget, see where we're at. We're over by $53. Yeesh. But we can easily see what some of the, uh, some of the, <laughs> some of the most expensive cards are. This Sulphur Springs literally goes for, uh, it literally goes for $11. And Battle Forged Axe, we're probably going to want to move to the maybe board. A uh, little expensive at $8. So for me to make my budget, I think I'm going to have to cut uh, Basilisk Collar and I think I'm going to have to put uh, the Shadow Spear out, unfortunately. And it does bring us a lot closer. Oh, it's just, just so sad. I'm going to go ahead and grab, um, I'm going to check out how much uh, Enlightened Tutor is along with Swords to Plowshares. Ooh, it's back up to... Oh, okay, that's that's a lot. Always, almost always under a dollar. Uh, Swords of Power Shares, down to $110. Oh my gosh. Relic of Genesis, why are you 100 and why are you a dollar 52? God, staples have gone up. Wayfarer's Bobble is $3? Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to probably cut the masterwork of ingenuity. And we're unfortunately probably gonna have to cut uh, one of these more expensive lands, like Terrain Generator. Ah, oh, that's it. Well, we got close. We got close. We got to, uh, 99 cards. Um, actually technically 98, because I said I was going to remove, uh, Masterwork of Ingenuity. Ah, uh, 98 cards. Well, I can't leave this thing unfinished, because I do want to play this at some point. The Ship's Caretaker. Um, I like her. I think that she's good. She has Evasion. She has the First Strike. She's she's not half bad as a choice for a voltron commander plus she does protect a bunch of your equipment and a simple rakdos charm rakdos charm is is a good uh trick to have um to mess with somebody's recursion to blow up somebody's all-important artifact or just when somebody tries to go infinite like with kiki jiki and one of the uh like restoration type angel creatures or something you can end up uh, pinging them for literally lethal and just kill them like that. Now, one thing that I forgot to note while making this deck is I actually forgot um, that Ancient Den and <laughs> the Great Furnace along with uh, the Vault of Whispers have all increased in price since uh, Pauper Affinity has, since, you know, Pauper has actually taken hold in Magic the Gathering and all of them have gotten a little bit more pricey. So, I'm unfortunately going to have to cut uh, a few of these and then that would actually perfectly meet the budget of $100. So there we are, $99.41. All we had to do was change out one Ancient Den for a Plains. Oh gosh, <sighs> so dumb. I didn't realize that uh, the prices had been like that. Now I'd like to give a quick deck tech for how this deck works and what exactly you're planning to do here you're planning to play out some of these uh some of these ramp spells as soon as possible into some of these very strong equipment cards knowing that the equipment cost zero mana to equip so you can take something like ogre's cleaver which gives your commander this huge power boost so when you play out your commander your commander is instantly uh this near lethal creature on board ready to deal damage to your opponent and you can even try to give it hex roof or shroud with uh the swift foot boots or one of the other hex proof granters like the mask of avison uh and rely on your commander just being a little bit too difficult to remove and wiping out your opponents one by one in order of likeliness of who is most likely to remove your commander first uh all of these are all of these equipments are more focused on giving it power and damage boost uh, more so than anything your instance here a lot of these are actually just meant to throw your opponent off just long enough like slowing them down early in the game and allowing you 
to uh, then take hold and play out your big thing. Uh, these other creatures are here just mainly for support and extra value uh, and to really solidify uh, your win. The mana base is meant to help you easily cast your colorless spells, of which you have plenty of them, and gives you just enough colorless mana to cast the cards that you know are like your commander that actually have colors in their cost. Um, you, you really want to use things like your charge counter lands, Tando, Ice Bridge, uh, very sparingly. That is the downside of having a budget mana base, is your, your mana base can get in the way and force you to play suboptimally. I hope you enjoyed this Commander Power Hour. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and all that. Not your first time on YouTube. And don't forget to check out my Discord, where people are constantly brewing decks and updating and uh, showing each other uh, what they're working on. And don't be afraid to uh, head there and ask for help uh, if you're looking for you know, some advice on a deck that you're building. Thank you for watching. Go outside, get some sunlight, meddle with some mages, crack some clues, and come on in for that face touch.